Welcome to Mars Attacks Prison Architect Alpha 14 and this video is about canteen and the kitchen. So this one's quite simple really. You need to feed your inmates for your prison. So we're going to build these two buildings, uh, the canteen and the kitchen. Now you obviously need these, you need to have staff to work for them as well so we'll show you how that works. Alright, first off uh, we're going to start with the kitchen just to keep it nice and simple. Um, there is no minimum size or maximum size or anything like that. You can go as big as and as crazy as you like, but I'm just going to make one which is 7 by 5 The reason why I'm doing this is that uh, I need at least three wide, uh, and I need a bit of space as well. So, once again, like every other room, I'm going to need a entrance. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to put just a normal door here. Uh, if you want to keep your inmates out of the kitchen, you can put a staff door there. Uh, I wouldn't recommend putting like a secured lock door, because every time the uh, staff have to come in and out, they're going to have to come through that door, and they're going to have to require a guard to unlock it, so it's going to be a bit silly to do so. Okay, so now we've got this room. Ah, there you go, with one light placed. I'll actually move that. I'm very pedantic about where my lights go. They have to be in the center of the room. Okay, so now we need to do, uh, we obviously need to allocate the space as a kitchen. Now, as I said, uh, there is no requirement for size or anything like that. Uh, it just needs to be indoors. Uh, it needs a cooker, a fridge, and a sink. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a useless kitchen if it doesn't have that. So, if we go to objects, uh, I'll start with the sink. Uh, I'm going to pop that to the top here. I'm going to start with the cooker right here. And I'm just going to get a fridge as well. I'm going to rotate that fridge so it's facing uh, to upwards. Um, and just pop it behind that the cooker there. So the two are next to each other. Now as you can see, um, we still got the exclamation mark because they haven't actually put the pieces in yet. Uh, and these items are going to need power and whatnot. So I've already got the, the main lines running underneath here, the utilities. So I'm just going to create a pipe to go up to the, um, the sink. And just these three here to link up these two items here. Because obviously these require power and the sink requires water. Now that's the bare minimums right there, so I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. Come on guys, get to work. And as you can see, the staff are coming in and out of these doors, no problems. Come on, just one more. Okay, fantastic. So now that kitchen is functioning. Um, and that's the basic bare minimum setting for a kitchen. Now of course, um, I'm just going to pop a few tiles in here, uh, just to make it look pretty. And that's the kitchen. So now I'll move on to the canteen. I'm going to pop the canteen just on the side of this building. I'll make it about that size. Now the reason why I'm making 11 meters across is because we need to fit in a few benches. Uh, it needs to be at least five on one dimension, uh, purely because we're going to have to put in a serving table, um, and that is at least five blocks long. So once again. Uh, oh, it's actually just knocked out those walls. So I was actually going to put a door uh, just across the bottom here. Yeah, where's my doors there? Let's pop a door in there. Actually, uh, I think I'll pop it there. Alrighty. So now that we have this space here, um, what we're going to do is we're going to obviously allocate it as a room. Uh, and we're going to make it a canteen. So 5 meters by 9 meters is probably uh, the smallest you want to make it. You can make it a little bit smaller than that. But once again, we're missing a serving table, uh, a table and a bench. So we'll pop those in. The serving table, as I was saying, is uh, 5 meters long. The table, we we'll actually put two of these in. Um, there and there. And you put a bench on either side of the table. Now, the cool thing is, uh, these objects can actually be passed through by anyone, so you don't need to leave space. They will move quicker between the spaces, obviously, but it's not a necessity. As you can see, he's still walking over the table, and it's fine. Alrighty. And that's it. That's the bare minimum requirement for a canteen. It'll function properly. Now, we obviously need staff members, so if you grab a cook, you just click anywhere and then the cook will do his business. Now the cool thing is, um, the cooks will actually take food that is stored in the fridge, cook it in the uh, cooker, and then actually stack it to the serving table. So the closest these three are together, the better. Um, I originally had a wall through here, and I was actually going to knock it out, but in this case we don't really need to, so I might just uh, fill that in with white tiles. I might just extend the kitchen um, out across the floor here. 
There's no real point of doing so other than it just makes the tiles all the same colour. It keeps it all uniform. And there you go. So that's, that's a nice little functioning cook, uh, kitchen and canteen. Um, I'll just fill in the floor of the canteen. Just so it's all nice and neat. Now, the way the kitchen and canteen works, obviously when it's time to eat, conveniently it is right now, uh, all of the prisoner inmates are going to come into the canteen. They're going to come to the uh, serving table, they're going to get some food, uh, and then they're going to sit down here and eat it. Now, you need to keep this as open as possible because the inmates will get caught up uh, and they won't actually have enough time to get to the food and actually sit down and eat. Uh, as you can see, the stack contains four cooked foods that can feed four inmates. Um, and there's a bit of a routine, so you see no, nobody ate it, it's yard time now, so the cook is now going to throw away that food. Now what's going to happen every day, uh, the inmates are <laughs> hanging out there, uh, food is going to get delivered, the cook will actually have to retrieve it from the delivery area, bring it here, store it in the fridges, and then take it from the fridges, put it into the cooker, cook it, uh, it takes a few minutes, and then they actually put it to the serving table. So there is a bit of a process, uh, so there you go, he's starting off. So the closer you keep the kitchen to the actual storage area, the better. Uh, because it just saves a lot of time with the cooks running back and forth. And try to keep as few locked doors in between them because obviously the cook can't unlock the doors and needs a guard every time. As you can see, that stack's got eight cooking now. Uh, it's got another one here cooking one. He's going to add more to it. There's now two. And so there's at least 10 items of food there. Oh, no, 11 items of food there. But that's it. It's nice and simple. Thank you so much for watching.